Hello, my name is Steve Fox. I'm general manager of the Canadian Sheet Steel Building Institute. In this fourth video in our series on the carbon neutral steel building system, we're actually going to look at architectural renderings of a retail building that has been developed for this project. I'm here with architect Graham Whiting of Whiting Design, who we retained to do the architectural work on this phase of the project. Graham, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your company? Sure. Um, we've been here in uh, Kitchener-Waterloo for 10 years now, uh, operating as, as Whiting Design. Um, I'm originally a University of Waterloo grad, so lots of roots in the area. Um, we have uh, had a focus on sustainable design pretty much since the outset of the firm. Um, uh, now it's been something that's been growing in the industry, so you know, originally this is what we said we were doing, really realistically only 10% of the projects that were coming in were focused on green buildings. Um, but we've really grown to a full-time sustainable design firm and have become leaders in the industry for uh, that type of thinking for um, designing green buildings in general. Um, I'm a lead accredited uh, designer uh, which is for the um, leadership in energy, uh, environment and design. Um, worked on quite a number of groundbreaking uh, green building and low energy projects throughout the region. So you're the natural for us to come to to talk about our net zero uh, steel building system for a retail application. Uh, so let's just in general talk about just the project itself and, and what your uh, involvement was in, in this phase of our work. Well, we were uh, given the task of creating uh, basically the look of the building uh, in the simplest possible terms. Now, we, uh, some very technical criteria, some excellent engineering work had gone into the project prior to our involvement. So um, the, the actual type of enclosure, the, the volumes involved, the, uh, the sort of the numbers um, were, were given to us as a set of parameters to say, given the set of constraints um, and given then uh, the desire to have a, a building which is very attractive, that has um, some obvious green features to it and, and is, is going to work also in you know, the forward thinking market for, for retail. Um, can we create a couple of prototypes of what this building looks like that fit the, the parameters of the, of the ambitious energy goals of the project? What were some of the challenges that you found in designing a net zero retail building? Uh, well, to be frank, the, the stuff that we see out there in retail is usually fairly uninspiring. Uh, it's, a, it's a big box, of course, is the term. Um, it's usually a very low quality of construction in terms of the energy efficiency goals. Um, and it's dedicated primarily to signage and, and as inexpensive an enclosure as possible. So it's a really interesting architectural challenge to create something that um, not only would be uh, relevant to that market and actually attractive to developers to, to use as a building, uh, but that also had some style to it, had a, had a, a reasonably good look to it that actually um, helped the public and consumers and so on appreciate the, uh, the actual green building uh, thought that went into it. Um, and then working with some very ambitious goals uh, put forward by the engineering uh, side of things that uh, I guess creating a building that had the specific constraints of, of the energy goals uh, and not just having um, a carte blanche uh, to be able to do whatever we wanted. Um, just really interesting challenges in general. So our focus is on a steel building system, obviously, for this application. Now, did that present any um, challenges or opportunities for you in the architectural design? Well, uh, there were two fundamental uh, construction types that we were working back and forth with throughout the project. Um, the two technologies being SIP panels, a structural integrated uh, insulated panel, which um, is not very common in the industry. Uh, and the, the manufacturing associated with that is something, of course, we'd like to see more of in the future. Um, but we, uh, the engineering recommendation was to work almost exclusively with a SIP panel. And, uh, from the industry feedback that we received along the way, it was much more amenable to a built-up uh, type system where we'd be using more conventional insulation and, and steel skin on either side. So as a technical challenge, that was an interesting one to be able to, to design the building so that it could work potentially either way. Um, another really interesting aspect of the, the building design in general is the amount of glazing involved. We're using a lot of passive solar um, thinking and techniques in arranging the building, so you end up with a lot, more, a lot of south-facing glazing, for example. Uh, a lot of desire to increase daylighting uh, to cut down on electrical usage. So that really began to dictate uh, um, and control the, the look of the building and, and 
became a challenge structurally from a design perspective, all those sorts of things as well. During your design uh, and your work, uh, did it become apparent that steel building systems had a particular advantage uh, for retail application? Absolutely. I mean, uh, steel is, uh, is a very efficient means of building in and of itself. Um, it's a, it, because of the inherently, inherent strength of the material relative to weight, um, it's an efficient use of material to enclose space. So when you're creating a high performance enclosure, steel is a natural choice. Uh, the recyclability and the recycled content of steel are also important factors there. Um, we get into discussion of uh, uh, design for disassembly where these types of buildings could potentially be disassembled, recycled, reused, that sort of thing as well. Really lends itself to, um, to green building in general. Uh, the low embodied energy of steel relative some, to some other construction types for, for large buildings like this, also very attractive. Um, and just the precision, speed of assembly, all those sorts of things as well. Not necessarily part of our work, but I think all those uh, characteristics of steel really do lend themselves to a very high performance, uh, very low energy building. Uh, in this project, we asked you to look at two different sizes of buildings. Can you just maybe describe the, the sizes, first of all, and then what are the significant challenges that are different between a smaller and a larger retail space? Uh, well, so the two sizes we're working with are a, uh, a 600 square meter and a 2,500 square meter building. The 600 being more typical of, say, a restaurant or a smaller retail uh, type application, and the larger one being much more of that sort of big box idea of a, lar a large retail store um, that could potentially be demised in, into smaller stores as well. Um, so the, starting with the smaller of the two, the, the 600 square meter, it's a lot easier to achieve the energy performance because you just have a smaller volume. Um, and it's easier to light because you have a smaller perimeter. So the, the, the two primary challenges of a low energy building, which are getting uh, good day lighting and space lighting, uh, as well as just the conditioned space and the amount of air that you're heating and cooling, uh, was less of a challenge on the, on the smaller version. Um, of course, smaller building, smaller roof area, so then when we're talking about the installation of photovoltaics and some of the mechanical systems uh, that go along with it, we have a lot less area to work with um, on a smaller building. So we looked at the alternatives of site-mounted photovoltaics uh, versus them actually mounting them on the roof of the building, for example. Now when we get into the much larger, uh, the 2,500 uh, square meter version of that, uh, we have obviously a lot more volume of air in a building like that, of that size. Um, and of course, the taller the building gets, that just multiplies uh, the amount of air that you're heating, cooling uh, for energy performance. Um, but of course, with a steel building system, we're working with sloped roofs. So uh, the challenge of designing that, the, that space, that shape of the building, the volume of the building, uh, trying to minimize the condition volume, uh, the amount of air in the building, while still getting a reasonable slope on the, on the roof, and then getting daylighting into the center of the building as well and towards the back of it. We have a lot of south-facing glazing, but by the time you get into the sides, and sort of the core and the back of the building, it's very challenging in a building of that size to get good natural light into those spaces. So part of the project uh, and result of this project was you developing architectural renderings of these, of these two buildings, uh, steel building systems. Can you show me uh, the end result then? Sure. Well, we put together an animation here uh, that goes through all the different aspects of the, of the design. I'll just walk you through. So this is, a, this is uh, an animation of a, of a model that we built, uh, which is the, the entire site of these two buildings. So a theoretical site, uh, the, the two buildings side by side, um, and then some of the building as well as site-related characteristics to a development that, that would be amenable to a building of this type. So uh, on the left, you see the smaller of the two, the, the 600 square meter, and then obviously the larger 2,500 square meter building. Um, you can see right off the, uh, right off the bat, a lot of south-facing glazing here. So these two buildings would be facing south, um, and the majority of the windows, uh, right from the outset, it's, uh, it's apparent that that's one of the main features. Um, here now, coming into the smaller of the two buildings, you can see uh, portable takes on the roof there, lots of glass on the south uh, side. Um, we're talking about a triple glazed uh, window for energy performance, and then these uh, sort of slats across the front uh, serve dual purpose, both to shade during the, the high uh, angle su summer hours, but also to uh, reflect light back into the building and up onto the ceiling to get lots of good natural light. We've also introduced some skylighting towards the back to light those darker back areas that we, we talked about. Um, we're talking about very uh, well-insulated assembly. Um, uh, 
uh, and photovoltaics on the roof to generate electricity for the building, going towards that net zero goal. Um, stepping into the space, it's going to be a much uh, brighter, open and airy than your typical sort of retail space, which tends to be quite enclosed. So lots of natural light, actually a very good view uh, out of the building, and lots of transparency from the front. So it could be a very uh, a new sort of um, feel for, for retail space. That one of the other interesting passive solar features of the building is that with all that south-facing glazing, uh, the concrete slab, which is fairly typical of a retail building like this, um, serves as a buffer. So it will absorb heat during the day, re-radiate it at night, um, and that uh, you can take advantage of that, that uh, passive uh, heating, cooling aspect of, of a building. Um, you can see here some of the site-mounted photovoltaics that we could use as an alternative to roof-mounted. Uh, now getting into the larger building, um, we're talking about a bolt-together frame um, that uses about 30% less steel than a conventional building, so very efficient in terms of material usage. Uh, here on the front, roughly 80% of the glazing for the building is, is on the front, south-facing. Uh, we've just designed the building so that it can be configured in a couple of different ways, give some flexibility to, to demising. So, uh, of course, um, you could get smaller, larger tenants and that sort of thing. You can see a considerable number of uh, photovoltaic panels on the roof. However, on the larger building, we've got lots of area for that sort of thing. We uh, calculated that we could probably provide uh, upwards of 50, 60 percent of the electrical demand of a building of this type. Um, the heating and cooling is provided by a uh, hydronic in-slab um, heat pump type system. So we have a ground source heat pump that circulates uh, either heating or cooling through, through the slab of the building. So a very comfortable heating type, very high efficiency. Uh, some other of the green features of the building, uh, we have a, a light colored roof, a white roof that will reflect a lot of the, the heat, particularly in summer sun, uh, provides passive cooling for the building. Uh, we've uh, split the roof so that it allows us to introduce a clerestory window across the, uh, across the back. Now it's a smaller amount of window because it's north facing, but you get a significant amount of daylighting then back into the building, addressing one of those challenges I, I spoke of with the, the larger building volume. Um, there's also a number of uh, features to the site of a building like this, which will contribute to the overall green characteristics and, and the features. Um, a lighter color of paving uh, can go a lot to reducing uh, heat island effect um, and uh, the heat demand on the building in general. Um, plantings throughout the site can also uh, provide not only that, that cooling for the building, but um, providing drainage areas for, for a more natural approach to stormwater management, uh, bioswales and this sort of thing. Um, so the concepts of the building can extend uh, out into the entire development as well as a general sort of low energy approach to building. So uh, it was a really exciting project to work on. Um, interesting client in that you know an advocacy group for a particular type of construction is not the, the type of thing we're used to working with, um, but it really uh, not only opened our eyes to the advantages and, and the real um, opportunities in using steel building systems, uh, but it was just really amazing to be part of uh, working with a team and designing a building that is really pushing the industry and really pushing uh, energy goals and, and carbon reduction goals in, in a very ambitious way. Um, aligns very closely with the work we like to do. Um, and it's uh, a, a really interesting problem to tackle where you've got uh, the manufacturers, you've got the association itself, you've got the development uh, community, and then you've got the, the tenants who uh, are showing increased interest in green building, um, showing a lot of green initiatives in their own uh, corporate structure and that sort of thing. I think the market is ready for this sort of thing, but it's, it's a significant departure from the status quo and the way things are done. So I'd be very interested to see the building built someday. So would we. <laughs> Great. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time today, Graham, and then thank you for your work on this project. And remember to visit the uh, CSSBI website at cssbi.ca. Uh, for future videos in the series and more information on the carbon neutral steel building system.